beautiful sunshine. As I was going to pick up Brother James this morning, as you know, I was looking at the mountains and all the beautiful colors starting to uh, come into uh, uh, view and the mountains as the leaves are changing. We just thank the Lord for that uh, beautiful uh, scenery, Lord, that you give us every day. Lord, help us not to take it for granted. And Lord, it certainly does speak of your glory and your love and your loving kindness and just how good you are to us. And I thank you, Lord, most of all for dying on Calvary for our sins and for shedding your precious blood. Lord, that we can even go to heaven, the Lord, and have eternal life. We thank you, God, for that. Lord, I pray the Lord you be with us today. It's an honor and privilege to be here. Thank you, Lord, for each person that's here and each visitor and each member. Thank you, Lord, for Brother Mitch and Miss Rhonda, Lord, that made it um, here safely yesterday and a good time we had with them. I pray to God that you just bless us, uh, the Lord, as we're starting this King James Bible Conference uh, today. I pray to God that you just be with us, be with the speakers, and just give them the words of the Lord that we need to uh, hear. And uh, be with uh, Brother Little as well this morning as he stands at his own pulpit down in Gaffney. He'll be here tomorrow. Pray to God that you just bless him and be with him today as well. And God, I just pray that you just bring the increase in these uh, meetings and everything that's done, that you'll get the honor and the glory. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name because you're worthy. Amen. Amen. Well, as I said, it's good to have everybody here. Good to have... Uh, oh boy. Brenda. Brenda. I want to say Belinda. I'm all I'm all the time renaming people, so don't take it personal. So uh, good to have Miss Brenda here. Thank you. And uh, so but anyway, um good to uh, let you know uh, bathrooms in here, man on the right. If you do happen to go straight, you go into a closet, take a lap, and go down. <laughs> uh, living room and then you can watch uh, some real preaching in the TV or something. But anyway, uh, so uh, try not to go to the left, go to the right. But we're happy to have everybody here. And it's good to have Brother Mitch uh, Canuck and his wife, Miss Rhonda. Went out to eat with them last night with uh, Brother Myers and them. Had a great time, fellowship. And uh, even though Brother Myers was there, we had a good time. <laughs> but uh, so uh, I say that because he's not here. So I said that. But anyway. <laughs> but no, we did have a good time. Eating the Chinese food and uh, all that kind of good stuff. So, but I met Brother Mitch uh, through uh, uh, Brother Myers over at Bingham Heights. And they're a real blessing to us, and ever since we've uh, been introduced to them, it's been a real blessing. And they're helping us out this this week with uh, putting up with them. I mean, putting them up and uh, over there at their place. And uh, the ladies uh, asked us could they feed y'all. And that was a real blessing too, and so we just thank the Lord for, for that. And, and so thank God that we can work together as brothers yeah. in Christ. Thank God that we're on the same page. And so I appreciate that. Well, I don't want to take any more time than yours is necessary. Let's do stand and uh, we'll sing a, a Amazing Grace. I think everybody's probably needing it. Anybody know what number it is? Should we check this out? Page 244. Page 244. Our visitor did that, but I didn't. 244. Just in case you do it. Brother, well, I ain't much for preaching. I'm sure ain't going to sing so much, so you have to forgive me. Amazing grace.
Mitch? You have a seat. Well, I asked Brother Mitch. He's very knowledgeable on everything I've heard him talk about personally. Just listening to him, he's knowledgeable. I was listening to him yesterday, and I was trying to hang on everything he said and every syllable, and and just say, man, I'm really stupid. <laughs> that's what I thought. I said, man, I don't know nothing. And um, so I don't know if that says very much about me, but it may not say a whole lot about him. Maybe he don't know a whole lot. <laughs> but no, he knows an awful lot, and um, he's going to share some of that with us this week. And, um, I've asked him to speak um, today, um, this morning, and, and during church, and then tonight on Baptist history. And so uh, he's very knowledgeable on that, and also on the King James Bible. So looking forward to all that. So, Brother Mitch, you come on up, and you do whatever the Lord leads you to do. And if you want to stop about 10 till if you want to go over, that's fine too. You do what you want to do. Thank you. Make sure you cut that thing off. Okay. Make sure it's running. We want to get you recorded. to deal with um, <coughs> some information on Baptist history in relation to the King James Bible, and we're certainly going to be doing that. Uh, <coughs> for Sunday school this morning, I'm going to deal with something that uh, is a conjunction of, uh, well, not conjunction, but it's, uh, it's something that I feel like needs to be said because of the controversy that uh, you pastor had gone through last year and uh, to let you know that I'm behind him and what he does uh, it's um, it's a sad day we live in when you've got uh, 231 English translations of the Bible produced since 1880 trying to supplant the King James Bible yeah and the motive for this is not a burden to get the Word of God out the way the King James translators did. It's money. It's a monetary thing. Yeah. And I prayed about this this morning, and I know that Brother Bizarre has done a good deal of this, but I didn't, I didn't ask you whether you had ever dealt with this, the Teen Study Bible, the NIV Teen Study Bible. But I know you have young uh, daughters that this will affect, and it has affected young people all over the United States. Since 1993, when this particular translation was produced for young people, now this is just a paper bound, just a inexpensive, of course I didn't give about 25 cents for it. I Wasn't like worth that much. For doing that. <laughs> but uh, this, this ploy right here is to try to appeal to the a nature of young people that we all have, all of us have a sinful nature that we we don't get rid of when we get saved. We won't get rid of it till we see Jesus Christ. But we have a new nature, and those natures have to fight one against another. And the one that you feed, so to speak, is the one that's going to have preeminence in your life. Young people have got a lot of pressures today, and uh, they are they are pressured to conform to uh, people's ideas and opinions about what they ought to be. And a young person that will live for God and have a Bible standard is considered strange or yeah. weird. And I just wish that I would have gotten saved when I was uh, about nine years old, but I was 18 when I got saved. That's been 36 years ago. I've been trying to live for God ever since. So teenagers can live for God. Amen. But I didn't have a lot of this junk to have to deal with here. And I say junk, uh, and I, exactly what I mean, I don't apologize for that. When I show you what's in this, you're going to understand it. If you love the Bible and you believe the Bible, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Now, 
Uh, take your Bible this morning by way of introduction. Go to several places. First of all, go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter number 1. Proverbs chapter number 1. Of course, we're going to read this out of the real Bible, out of the King James Bible. And yeah, man. The world of difference. Now, in case you don't think that I know what I'm talking about, I've got a hundred of these translations myself. Got them stored away, and I've got them for a reason. I got them so that I can critique them, expose them, and show what's wrong with them. Yeah. Now, unless you think what I'm getting ready to deal with this morning is a is a moot point, I was in Alabama last year, and uh, in a good church. I'm in a good church, Independent Baptist Church, good church, and uh, there were some visitors there that I didn't know about. I had, they, had no way of knowing what they were carrying, and I had no way of knowing what they believed. But the pastor of the church, a good friend of mine, he came out of Joe Coley's church down in uh, Childersburg, Alabama. <coughs> but I brought this, what I'm getting ready to bring to you here, and I didn't see it, but the mother in that family was sitting back there the whole time I was dealing with it, and she was, they said she was shaking her head like this, you know, disagreeing with me, which don't bother me in the least bit. I let them get up and slam the door on me. And as sweet as I am, I just I don't understand that. <laughs> Humble too, by the way. No, I'm just kidding, you know that. But anyway, uh, she was sitting there shaking her head. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see it because I try not to pay any attention. Once you know, I try to just keep you know my eyes on what I'm doing. But come to find out, she had uh, seven children. And she had just bought all her teenage children one of these NIV study Bibles. And I didn't have a clue now what the Holy Spirit did, you understand. Yeah. Well, she got mad enough to, you know, bite 20 penny nails and spit out thumbtacks at me. And, and, but she didn't say anything to me. But she, she